The plan today is to do a very, very, very strong cat eye. And of course, that's when my eye starts to water. Hi, hello, hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and to Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. And today we're talking about a movie that has been long disserviced since I was a mere nine-year-old child. And I feel like I am doing some justice for the world to defend such a work of art. And I'm going to do so. I am heated. <laughs> and if you don't like this movie, you just don't like good movies and I stand by that. Hot words to start off a video but I'm sizzling. Fry pan. Would that lead into a good HelloFresh sponsorship? Am I sponsored by HelloFresh today? I'm gonna send it over to today's sponsor. Uh, shout outs to Ad Roll Kenny who is gonna get y'all prevy on who's giving me money this week. Thank you. Why hello there, it's Ad Roll Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that allows you to make delicious, comforting, easy, and healthy meals straight from the comfort of your own home with ingredients sent to you right to your doorstep. HelloFresh takes the stress out of cooking and meal planning and allows you to get pre-portioned, pre-measured out ingredients to make delicious, comforting, and unique meals in under 30 minutes, often less than that. As we're transitioning more into the colder weather, fall, winter, what have you, HelloFresh offers seasonal meals that allows you to warm up with a nice bowl of say shoyu ramen or maybe even the turkey ragu gnocchi. That sound good. And with all the stress of the holidays, HelloFresh takes the grocery aspect out of things, which is really great because grocery shopping sucks. So now you can spend more time with friends and family instead of shopping for groceries. Cut out even more stress by adding on add-ons like desserts, sides, pre-cooked proteins. HelloFresh meals are so delicious and they allow me to get out of recipe ruts and discover new flavors that I really enjoy. This week I tried the, um, it was a salad, <laughs> which sounds boring, but somehow they were able to make a salad just it was one of the best salads I've had in a minute. It was the brown sugar bourbon chicken salad, which makes me now obsessed with brown sugar bourbon seasoning. Kale, apple, dried cranberries, sunflower seeds, and honey mustard dressing. <laughs> Amazing, astounding. Stellar. And HelloFresh has limited edition holiday boxes. What? that allows you to get everything you need for like a holiday meal with no planning. That's amazing. They got everything these days, don't they? And also it just allows you to cut down on food waste cause you know everything that's in the meal will be used. And it just made me generally a better cook even when I'm not using HelloFresh. Love it. And I'm about to douse everything in that brown sugar bourbon seasoning. Cause y'all, y'all put me on HelloFresh. Thank you. Love you. You're so great. So if you'd like to check out HelloFresh, they will be linked down below. Feel free to use code Kenny14 for 14 free meals. Plus it is the holidays after all. Three free gifts across five HelloFresh boxes along with free shipping. Big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Maybe my eyes are watering because I'm staring into the sun. That's so dark though. Okay. Hey. Last week we talked about this beautiful Detroit gem I found on Tubi called He Played Me. The story about so many things yet nothing at all. Um, I don't even know how to describe it in succinct verbiage. Uh, so I highly recommend watching that video. It was a masterpiece. <laughs> Truly something of legend. If you'd like to check that out, it'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. So recently there's been like this kind of inexplicable resurgence of the 2004 Halle Berry Catwoman movie. Within that dialogue are a lot of people that seemingly really want us, those with good taste, to hate this movie. And it's always befuddled me because I remember when this movie came out, I was a chubby nine-year-old girl who liked pretty things and loved female protagonists. And to some extent, I remember people not liking this movie, but I didn't care because I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I've seen this movie so many times, but I hadn't watched it since I'd 
become an adult. An interesting time to see, is this movie actually as bad as everyone kept trying to tell me that it was? In returning to this movie, I stand even stronger on this hill that I'm willing to die on. Unapologetic, campish femininity. And people think it's bad, and I can't help but feel like it's a little misogynistic. <laughs> and I will go on record to say that I love this movie infinitely more now as a 20-something than I did in the early 2000s. Like, what's not to like about it? Halle Berry is hot, and I still wanna be her. I still wanna be her now, and she's like in her 50s. Benjamin Bratt, who I've had a crush on since Miss Congeniality, so fun. <laughs> and then just like a bunch of camp fun for the girls and the gays. I truly believe that this movie is considered bad in the zeitgeist of film. I feel like it's suffering much in the same way as like a Jennifer's body. It was trying to sell off of the hotness uh, of the main protagonist. Those who would be more able to appreciate this will most likely be either women or those in the LGBT community. And for some reason, much like any other superhero movie, this movie is targeted specifically to straight cisgendered men, as if they're the only people that watch movies. That demographic of people probably won't love <laughs> hyper feminine fun of this movie. I'm sure some did, don't get me wrong. I'm sure some people got the fun. They realize it's not something that's supposed to be taken super seriously, but there is this like, inclination to say things like the acting's bad and this is bad and technically it's so bad. And anybody that says that I stand by, it's because you don't have taste. I, I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong, the movie's not perfect. I think one of the most reasonable complaints in my opinion are the camera work can be a little disorienting. Make us as the audience feel like we are a cat and like having these jerking movements, but it could give you vertigo. But as far as like the movie, I still love it. <laughs> I love it more now as an adult. I stand by that. When I was a kid, I had the PS2 game. Never finished it. It was harder than it looked. Um, but yeah, I love the idea of like a hot black woman being hot, being black, being campy. And yeah, I just feel like this movie deserves to have its own following, much as like, you know, Jennifer's body has been reclaimed. So what about Catwoman, damn it? I feel like it should be as well. But without further ado, <laughs> this is Catwoman. 2004, baby. So we meet our main character, of course, played by Halle Berry. Her name is Patience Phillips. The first we see of her is her actually floating face down in a body of dirty water, and she is apparently dead. And then we go back a bit to see how she ended up here. So Patience in her life was quite the pushover. She was an art designer at a cosmetics brand. Um, Maybe that's why I like this movie. <laughs> the company's called Hadare, run by a married couple, Laurel and George. I don't know who plays George, but Laurel's played by Sharon Stone. Gorgeous. Ah, just two bad bitches in this movie. And George and Laurel are kind of at odds with each other because she has recently stepped down as the face of Hadare um, to be replaced by a younger woman. Tale as old as time, misogyny. This is a woman that George is cheating on Laurel with and she kind of knows that. At work, Patience is chastised for her work often. Again, she's quite the pushover. She doesn't really stand up for herself at work. She doesn't really stand up for herself in any place in her life. Like for instance, her neighbors are incredibly loud and rowdy and they just completely ignore her when she asks them nicely to turn the music down. But she's this meek, mild, ignorable by most, except for her strange affinity for cats. And so one day she is in her apartment and she sees a cat climb high above her window. And this is when I knew it was a movie because ain't no way in hell, but okay, cool. Uh, she sees this cat, she goes to save it. Again, I'm willing to suspend belief and believe that this black woman is gonna go out there to save a cat, whatever, we need it for the story. Now she's out on the ledge and she's trying to help the cat uh, and sexy ass Benjamin Brett. <sighs> Daddy. Papa. <laughs> He just... <laughs> In this movie, he plays a cop named Tom and he sees her and mistakes her for someone who's about to jump to their death. And so he's trying to talk her down like, don't do this, you have like more to live for and whatever. And she's like, no, I'm here trying to get a cat. But the cat disappears and he's able to save her from the ledge before she falls to her death. Uh, and then he ends up seeing the cat that she was talking about. So no, she wasn't trying to kill herself. 
She was trying to do something that made even less sense. She was trying to save the fucking cat. But this starts off their inexplicable attraction to each other because he's like, ooh, quirky. But anyway, she's late for work, so she ends up going off to Hadare. Again, we hear more about Laurel's phasing out and how they're bringing in another model, which is just preposterous because Sharon Stone is incredibly milfy. She is who I aspire to be in my 40s, just spectacular, gorgeous woman, but okay, sure. We gotta believe that this 18 year old is, is okay. I mean, misogyny does stupider things, but okay. Tom sexy ass come to the business for some reason. They allow him to come in there. I guess he's a police officer. And he comes to see patients. She had apparently left her wallet. He also of course takes this opportunity to flirt with her ask her out to coffee. She agrees in a way that felt very natural to me because that's how I would say it. Okay. Yeah. Struggling. But before she can go to that coffee date, she ends up having to go back up to the company late at night to get some blueprints or something, schematics or something, I don't know. But she had to come back to the company after dark. And while she's there, she ends up overhearing some top secret information about the company's new product, Biolin. Specifically, that it seems to have some very, 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 very real health risks to those in the clinical trials they'd been having. Causes your skin to kind of erode if you stop using it. It can cause headaches, fainting. But because this is a superhero movie, they gotta be on some supervillain shit. And they're like, we don't care. So they're like, we gotta release this to the masses so that they can buy it and make us millions and millions of dollars. Oh, 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 oh. But in the midst of having this conversation, Patience overhears it. And before they can see who it was that heard it, she runs away is able to escape in a pipeline because they were shooting at her. They want her dead. And what they did to make sure that she isn't a threat to the company is close the pipeline and flush her with the sewage. What a way to go. Now dead floating in doo-doo water. And I remember the scene being particularly disturbing for me because I've always had this like fear of being trapped in a pipe in particular, like something too small and then fills with water. I think it comes from watching Fear Factor as a child. That is always fucked with me. And also Titanic uh, drowning uh, scares me. And so <laughs> this scene really was like all my fears in one. Seemingly this should be the end of her story. But because she was kind to the cat in the beginning of the movie, whom we find out later is named Midnight, the cat calls upon its pussy posse I'm so funny, Jesus. And she is brought back to life when the cat breathes liver pate and canned tuna into her mouth. <laughs> and she is then reborn as Catwoman, a bad bitch. Love that for her. She ends up missing that coffee date with the cop because she was too busy trying to figure out why she has feline agility and, and senses. She ends up taking the cat back to the address that's on its collar. And that's where she meets creepy cat lady. But she does notice that something is going on with her, especially considering now she's doing things like a cat. She can't resist catnip. She's eating six cans of tuna at a time. She's very agile and nimble in a way that she wasn't before. And beyond that, she's starting to have a general, like, I don't give a f personality. But if you recall, her boss is a dick and he was chastising her for how she didn't get whatever she was supposed to get yesterday uh, cause she was too busy dying. And her new cat persona makes her a little bit better at being able to defend herself, like stand up for herself. But she finally stands up for herself, an act that does get her swiftly fired. Patience goes to visit Tom to give him an I'm sorry coffee because she missed her date because again, she was too busy dying. He's at a school doing those like talks, like don't do drugs, kids, stay out of trouble, even though it's not like a school to prison pipeline. Anyway, I think this is the scene that most people hate. I'm kind of obsessed with it, but sure. They end up playing a game of one-on-one -on -one basketball as probably the most quintessentially early 2000s song plays. And that is so, so, so scandalous by somebody. I don't know whoever, <laughs> who made that song. Some simulation, baby. 
a little conversation, maybe. But yes, the sexual tension is palpable. It is building. But yeah, Patience is starting to lose some patience. She's starting to get a little bit more rowdy. Buck back against people who have like walked all over her. She goes over to that neighbor that was really loud, destroying his loud ass speaker, finding her affinity for whips. She starts wearing leather. She cuts all her hair off, steals somebody's motorcycle. Bad bitch activities, I'm down. Honestly, I think I'm gonna be Catwoman next year. I was gonna be Jessica Rabbit. I keep saying every year I'm gonna be Jessica Rabbit and I never get around to it, but maybe I'll be Catwoman. Why not both? Halloween isn't but one day. It's as many days as you choose to make. And effectively, Patience becomes the sexy anti-hero. You boys thought you could come in here and steal all these beautiful things. What a perfect idea. Stopping robbers at a jewelry store so that she can take it for herself. It would seem that when she does things like this, she doesn't remember in the morning. So it is truly like she has this alter ego that kind of has her doing bad girl stuff. For instance, the next morning she chills out and she realized I stole a bunch of jewelry. <laughs> Oops. Um, and so she goes to the police station, returns the jewelry in a, in a doggy bag that says sorry on it. She keeps a few things for herself though, good plan. But overwhelmed and confused by the changes that are happening in her life, Patience starts to look up cats, the history of cats, how their lore has perhaps in some way affected her. She does find herself to be doing things that are most feline after all. And in these photos, she sees pictures of the cat Midnight. She goes back to creepy cat lady. And this is where she learns that she is now a cat woman. She has been blessed with a second life after she's died. And she has now been reborn as someone that Midnight decided was deserving of a second chance. Apparently she's not the only of her kind. Midnight has lived many a millennia and has done this throughout history and essentially implores her to be the woman she was always meant to be. Again, a bad bitch. I feel like this movie is full of like great messaging. I don't understand the problem here, but okay, cool. And so Patience understands this as she needs to figure out who killed her in the first place. Cause she also doesn't recall anything of that night particularly. So she remembers bits and pieces, but not the general why she died. And so, again, like a bad bitch, she gets greased up, wears a badass outfit, dresses in leather, goes strutting across the rooftops because drama. This movie is iconic and I refuse. I refuse to let anybody tell me that this movie is in something of wonder. And non-ironically, this is not a it's so bad it's good movie. It's literally one of the best movies ever and I don't care. She ends up at a club to find one of the men that shot at her the night that she escaped and died down the pipe. Um, he's at a club, she goes to it. She orders a white Russian, hold the Russian, like hold everything that makes a white Russian a white Russian. So it's just a cup of cream. Side note, one of my favorite drinks are white Russians. And I wonder if that's because of this movie subconsciously. I always wanted to try it as an adult. And now it's again, one of my favorite drinks ever. So might have something to do with it. I also really like Kahlua. Anyway, now this scene, I'm not gonna show any of it cause it is a complete seizure hazard. She gets on the floor, does capoeira. Wait, what is it? It's capoeira. Capo what? The choca de cordios. <laughs> Choke so a dick, do it. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Using a whip, don't give a f who gets hit. And then with a flourish, she goes to ruffle dude up to get some answers about why she was killed in the first place. And I love it. There's some good old like cat got your tongue puns. She asks why she was ordered to be killed. And he says, because she overheard something about Bioline, the new product that's gonna be coming out. But she goes back to the company to figure out what they've been hiding. And one thing they have been hiding is the death of the scientist who was showing his concerns about the new product that night that Patience ended up at the company when she wasn't supposed to be there. Patience discovers the body and someone at the lab sees her over the body and mistakes her for the killer. So she has to run away before they catch her and think that she killed this dude, but they think so anyway. So news breaks that a suspect who was dressed as a cat killed somebody at the cosmetics company. Why no one put two and two together that <laughs> she looks exactly like the sketch, I don't know. And so now people are on the, on the search for Catwoman, namely Tom Sexy. And he starts to get a little suspicious because he notices that Patience's handwriting 
and the handwriting of whoever stole those jewels earlier are suspiciously similar. But a handwriting expert says that though the writing seems similar, these are most definitely two separate people. Satisfied with that, he decides to continue seeing her. Um, they go on a date, they go to the fair. They nearly kiss atop the Ferris wheel, but there ends up being, you know, it's a, it's a superhero movie, so something has to go wrong. This didn't realize that he's not the lead character here because he jump off of the Ferris wheel. A kid on the Ferris wheel nearly falls and Catwoman is able to save them. I don't know how this didn't raise suspicions considering she would have to be quite agile. <laughs> So later that night, Catwoman breaks into Laurel and George's house to get more information on this Beoline stuff, right? Or more specifically, to talk to George about it. But while she's there, she gets confronted by Laurel. She says that she's looking for her husband and that she knows about Beoline and how it's basically disease in a jar. And Laurel doesn't seem to have much loyalty at all. She's like, fuck that nigga if you wanna find him. Sure, I didn't know anything about this whole Beoline situation, of course not. I have no loyalty to this man. If you wanna find him, here he is. So Catwoman goes to the performance that he's currently at. Like my nails, just got him done. But before she could finish the job, police try to take her in and she has to run away. Among said cops are Tom and they are very hot. <laughs> They're a very hot couple. It's a lot of sexy back and forth. Again, you turn around, you put your hands on your head. Ooh. I never get offered to be in threesomes with people that look like this. I always get like life's leftovers. Maybe if this happened, maybe I'd consider it. But anyway, she's able to get away. Later, George and Laurel get into an argument over Beoline and he slaps her across the face. And this is how we discover that Beoline makes your face rock hard. Patience outside of her cat costume is still seeing Tom. They go get sushi. I feel a little attacked because that would be me. They talk of his exploits with Catwoman. You know, all of this, of course, dramatic irony, knowing that we as the audience know that she is Catwoman. They make out, they have sex at her place. She leaves scratches across his back. And um, while he's there, he accidentally steps on one of her nails, like one of the nails that she wears in her Catwoman suit. He's back to suspecting her again. So he takes one of her glasses that have like a lipstick print on it to see if it's at all similar to when she kissed him on the cheek as Catwoman. It's very similar. Patience awakes alone, but particularly with a call from Laurel about how now she believes everything she said about her husband and his, his horrible cream and how he's gonna ruin everybody and that she must rush to her home for some reason, I forget why. But when she gets there, she sees George dead, covered in scratches and bullet wounds. And she is now effectively framing Catwoman as the murderer of her husband. And this scene, if you didn't get that this is supposed to be campy and dramatic up until this point, I don't know how you didn't know it after this scene, cause they show <laughs> Laurel crying and it is the most draggish, <laughs> campy performance. Like it's so fun. <laughs> Judge! <laughs> I don't understand how you can watch this movie and not know what type of movie you're watching. Like Tom is the police officer that brings her in, of course. And he's interrogating her about her being Catwoman, about her killing people. There's so much evidence that it's you. And she's like, think about the time you met me. I saw a woman who was trying to save a cat from a ledge. And she said, no, you didn't. You saw someone who was about to jump off of a ledge. So obviously, Things can look like a lot of things, but they're not what they actually are. But he leaves her there, though he does continue to contemplate her words on the matter. So she sits there in her cell. Midnight comes through bars to visit her. And I guess that's when she realized that maybe one of her powers as Catwoman is that inexplicable ability to scrunch into small places. I remember the distinct fat girl panic I had as a child watching this. Like there are certain movies from the 90s and early 2000s about again, people getting caught in small spaces and it just sends me into claustrophobic fat girl panic every time. So he's able to steal someone's car and make a beeline straight to the cosmetic company to save humanity from using all of this cream that could honestly kill a lot of people or at least harm them. Uh, she ends up destroying all the delivery trucks so that they can't make their rounds. And meanwhile, Tom goes to Laurel to see if she'll confess 
to her part in things because while while uh, Patience was in interrogation, she was saying all the things that are really going on at the company. So he went to prove it himself. While they're there, he ends up getting like somewhat of a confession from her that results in her shooting him in the shoulder. But here comes Catwoman to save the day. Again, another incredibly campish fight scene where she like admits that she's Patience Phillips while she beats Laurel's ass. But again, her face <laughs> is concrete. So she doesn't really feel it all that much. It's like completely impervious to pain. She stabs her through the leg uh, with a piece of glass, but somehow through the end of this scene, she's still able to do all this shit. I don't know. Anyway, it's a movie, it's campish. It's, I've suspended reality for a lot of things in this movie, that's fine. Laurel ends up hanging on a ledge, about to fall to her death, and Patience goes up to her, offering her hand to save her, but alas, she doesn't make it, and she takes a very long fall to her death. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. And therefore, all is well with the world. Catwoman decides to leave the cop, though, because she can't be restrained by a man. But you're gonna get married and have babies now? You have superpowers, the f And so begins, theoretically, her journey as Catwoman as the credits begin to roll. And that, my friends, is f Catwoman. And again, I will not let anybody talk down on this film. This is a camp wonderland. I truly believe that the reason that people were so readily desiring to call this a bad movie is because of misogyny <laughs> and racism. Don't forget about that. She's always there somewhere. It's very feminine. It's unapologetically so. And I think because people think of very feminine things as frivolous, not good because it's not serious. And the movie was never trying to be serious. <laughs> Again, the camera work is a little disorienting sometimes, but I get it, but it's just like, it can be a little disorienting. But the, the movie itself, the acting, the over the topness, the too muchness of it, the horniness of it. <laughs> it's very horny. I, I don't know how much I've really gone into that, but it's a very horny movie. I love this movie. And I feel like the reason why so many people don't like this movie is because you let a bunch of straight old white men be the arbiters of taste. And I stand by that. So if you don't like that opinion, you can kick rocks and blow bubbles. I don't give a <laughs> That is all for today, folks. <laughs> It's very passionate. If you like this video, feel free to like it. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, all of which are Kenny JD. Um, if you have other quote unquote bad movies that you, this isn't a bad movie, but if you have any bad movies that you want me to try out, want me to see, talk about, feel free to put those down in the comment section and I will see you guys next time. Bye. I hate to admit this and I probably shouldn't admit it on camera, but I was the child that would hiss at people. I had friends somehow though. They let me get away with that. I grew up to have quite the personality. What can I say?